Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the rundown. I'm your host, Evan from High Media TV. I'm joined with in in this in my ho with by my host, Noda Brian Noda to Ortega. I apologize for my cadence and the and the emotional safety blanket. I am very depressed. And I'm here to try and cheer Evan up with video games. Um, if there's any consolation, the fact that Borderlands 4 isn't coming until 2025. At least you have. At least I'm not logging off the server that early. I gotta at least see if that game's flop or not. Yeah, hopefully they return to Borderlands Two and Borderlands One writing. But I don't hey, know. Hey, as long as they keep the <laughs> gameplay of Three, I'm chilling. I mean, that's what everybody's asking for. So yes, it'd be for all of you who have not heard, Borderlands Four got officially announced at Gamescom over in Germany, right? That's what uh, I was seeing this year. I think so. Yeah, we're gonna pull up uh, all of the actual games uh, that were announced here at Gamescom this year. Uh, a lot of shit let's... drops. A lot. A lot of shit drops. And this is even after what we had. Uh, what was the first thing that we already reacted to? A few different things. Uh, Xbox, uh, everything going on this past summer. Yeah, Xbox games, uh, com or whatever it is. Uh, Summer Game Awards, right? Summer yeah. Games Best. I don't know. Xbox but. Showcase, yeah. So let's let's start scrolling through. We've got Avowed. We knew that was coming. That's um, Obsidian's answer to Skyrim. Um, then we have, uh, it, as well as Vessel of Hatred. We already know that's coming. Um, that as well space as for Starfield. Which, fun fact, I've actually been playing Starfield again, trying to get back into it, and I'm like, you know what? The game, like, the game itself feels tight to play. I'm just kind of, like, skipping over a lot of the white noise as far as, like, side quests and shit. Like, I'm just doing what they fucking suggested. People is just, like, rush through the main game, like, and then, like, actually play it, like, on the second playthrough. When you get to New Game Plus, which I'm like, you know what? Let me do that. Okay. I got you. Uh, we also have Lost Ember uh, Remastered, which I didn't know that that was a game that be remastered. Aria History Untold, and Smoosh Come Home. I've seen a little bit of Smoosh. It actually looks really cute. Yeah. Cool. Got that Indiana Jones game that looks made of shit, and No Tree of the Last Song. I've talked about this with you at length. I will uh, say real quick about the Indiana Jones game. I hope it does... Uh... It's a, you know, a massive uh, AAA release, but it's made by Machine Games. And I love Machine Games because they're mm -hmm. the people behind the War Wolfenstein series. So I hope it works out for them so they can start making Machine Games AAA as opposed to what this is. Because I'm not really excited for this. I'm just excited for the studio. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, incoming. Brian's coming now. Fucking... <laughs> Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Everybody I know and their mother is excited for this game. I can't fucking wait. They released like three different trailers out of this. Just one fuck. Ah, oh, and they announced Ultimate Gohan. I'm so hyped. So hyped. So hyped. Potential unlocked Gohan, however you want to call them. But yes, that's going to uh, that's gonna be my game. That's the next game I'm pre-ordering. That, 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 that and um, Space Marine. I already pre-ordered it. 13 days away, baby. Uh, uh, go back up real quick, just because I want to say all the games. Okay, we have indie boot, indie arena booth. Cool. Mm -hmm. We already know about Age of Mythology Retold that was announced earlier this summer. Little Nightmares Little Three Nightmares for the horror three. fans. Unknown Nine Awakening from Bandai Namco. Okay. Uh, Farewell North, Button Man. This looks cute. Uh, Farah Sunder Tribes. Warriors of Novathera, Adventure, Towerborn. I'm morbidly interested. Let's see what it is. Can you become the AC Manny's Fine Fine Towerborn, the new action adventure game created by Stokes 2 that bought you the award winning Banner Saga trilogy? Interesting. Okay, it's a, uh, JRPG? It's a uh, JRPG esque type of thing, which is interesting. It looked a little tower defense -y, so I see a little, little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Eyes of War, Arena Breakout, uh, Humanity, Humanity, Z, Humanity. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this name, fuck that game. 
Pinball Spire. I'm gonna. I don't want to go through all of them just because I don't want the the first That's twenty okay. minutes of his podcast to be like just us just being shit. Just, we're just Stalker Two. We Stalker know about two, that was know. coming out. Kingdom um, Come Deliverance Two. Yeah, that people are gonna love. People are kind of stoked for that. Um, let's see. Mecha Break. I've heard is really good. Mecha Break. Yeah, it's a five v five multiplayer mech game, almost like uh, Arbor. Yeah, 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 I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really a forklift simulator. Oh God, Jesus! Uh, are we? Are, 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 is this repeating things now? Um, I don't think so. I think these are all just like announcements, maybe updates to certain games. Definitely, that pinball game has been repeated a few times. Yeah, all right. Jesus. You know what? Fuck it. Let's go to over to videos and just do it this way. It's just... Where is... Where the fuck... Well, I'm really excited for Mafia of the Old World. Uh, mm -hmm. Really excited for... There was something else. I can't remember. Uh, I mean, hype for Borderlands 4, definitely. Uh, fuck it. We'll just let... Uh, I I'm going to just let Game Ranks do it. The world's largest computer and video game event and as such we learn a lot of new stuff about what's coming down the pipeline i don't want to waste any time let's get into it dying i'm really happy light about this first beast. announcement at number 20 it's dying light the beast a completely yeah, a brand new tightly game. designed as they're calling it adventure with the original dying light protagonist kyle crane now that might come as a bit of a surprise to players of the original Dying Light because you could either blow yourself up in a big old sacrifice or mutate yourself into a zombie nasty depending on your choices. Uh, now I don't know what exactly happened that allowed him to exist after the first game's endings. I'm getting the feeling that the zombie nasty one might has something to it because he's got a bit of a beast thing going for him. He's got a, one of his eyes looks uh, infected. Uh, whether it's pink eye or some kind of virus that gives him beast powers, we don't know. Let's They've been calling it this video. Just yeah. jump through to the titles and then Kong we'll Survivor talk about Instinct. It. Absolutely no interest on my end. Word. Reanimal. That's Arc. also made by Mark uh... Raiders. Like Ark is an Ark Survival of Evolved or eh. uh, Marvel oh. Rivals. It's just Marvel Overwatch. Slop. Herdling. This is this is interesting. Sales. It is a shepherd game. You're shepherding oh, cute. some pretty cool looking beasts, honestly. They're called calicorns and uh they got interesting multicolored fur and horns and eyes and I'm all for that actually. That looks actually kinda cute. All uh, right. this game, I'm so fucking disappointed about this game. Did Batman you... Arkham Shadow. Do you know but... what happened with this? Didn't they that, take? Didn't the studio that made the Arkham game shut down, and they've just given it to a whole different studio? No, it's still by Rocksteady. Uh, Facebook came to Rocksteady and was like, "Here's a hundred million dollars, make an exclusive game for MetaQuest." And there you go. It's such bullshit because it's literally a prequel to the Arkham Batman games. That's only on VR. Fucking bullshit! Fucking uh, bullshit! Fucking bullshit! I heard Monster about, Hunter Monster Wilds. Wilds. Yeah, I heard about that. We already knew that a was lot coming. Of people were excited. Predecessor. What was this? It, the launch trailer kind of made a click. It's somewhere between a MOBA and a third person. Listen, the only MOBA thing I'm going to be playing is like uh, Deadlock, that new thing Valve is testing. Okay. It was, it's yeah, fun. I'm, 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 I'm in the, pre I'm in the uh, beta test. It's pretty fun. Fun. Nice. Dark, gory Late games, so they the made spark. Fuzzy Bot to make these vibrant games. I, none of that matters. This looks... I don't add that. Monument Valley. Honestly, it looks like a fairly this big update to what I generally think of Monument Valley. It looks like a much bigger adventure. Although, I mean... It looks like a puzzle game. That's cute. Yeah, but it's Netflix. Netflix is making the game. No shit, really? Oh, yeah, you're right. The Netflix game's up there. Uh, Albion... Masters of Albion. Um... Isn't that just fucking, like, rehashed fucking, uh... Isn't Albion Online basically just, like, fucking, like... RuneScape 2, like, RuneScape Try Number 2 Electric Boogaloo? Uh... I think also a Peter Molyneux game. game. So, yeah. it's a oh, god it's, game. 
that oh, I've seen a lot of people Malibu already okay. call a combination between populist and black and white. Now, obviously, like I said, our man Molyneux is known kind of for over-promising and under-delivering, even though he's delivered a lot of good oh, games in the past. A lot of... So I watched some of the Gamescom uh, actual, like, live stream. Uh, I watched it through some YouTubers. And they brought mm -hmm. this man out. I can't believe P Peter Molyneux is not, like, blacklisted from video games. <laughs> Isn't he the one that made the Fable games? He's the one who made the Fable games. He made that cube game. And then he made like a uh, uh, NFT cyber, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Cryptocurrency S game that turned out to be a complete scam. And people were just like, whoa, Peter. And I'm like, how, how? <laughs> uh, I'm skipping Squid Game Unleashed. That's another Netflix game, but all good. Civ 7. Oh, we're actually getting some uh, gameplay for it It doesn't look like uh, it's just a rehash of Civilization 6. It seems like they did a lot to rethink some of the systems, particularly they've come up with this new Ages system, which basically rearranges the long game into three segments, Antiquity, Exploration, and Modern. They also teased some interesting results to different kingdoms. I like what I'm seeing with that. And while those are some I interesting features, it does... What's up? So I want to like these games, but I just can't get into them. They are way too complicated. Can I make Can I make a suggestion for something that might be a little more interesting for you? What? Age of Empires. 4. Okay. Age of Empires Four is less like this. It's less like this, like a board game, and more. It's an RTS where I'll um after we're done the recording, I'll play a match of it and show you how it works. Oh, for sure. Uh. Yeah, and yeah, like, let me just say, because the next thing is Black Ops and nobody cares. We already know how it looks. Uh, I have some things I want to say on it, though, but continue. Yeah, uh, what's it going? I just wish that these games were more so, like, as shitty as this is going to sound, one of those phone app city building games outside of the multiplayer aspect of just, like, being able to collect shit build upgrade when it comes to this it's just so complicated in the long game that like nothing gets explained figure it all out on your own good luck trying to maintain all this shit and i'm like i can't i can't do it i can't this uh civ 6 stellaris uh fucking even uh they are billions is more so of a uh tower defense game but it's still kind of like this but yeah I, I just can't i can't get into these games and i really want to because they look so fucking interesting they are, um, and here's the thing about them, right? Like, you can try Catan. Okay. It's a board game, it's basically this. Okay, maybe. I'll give it but a try. But it's a board game and you need actual people to play with, so. Where? It, you know, so, yeah, but moving on. So, but next up we have the Black Ops 6 developers campaign. developers that work on Call of Duty games. Which is all peachy keen, but here's the thing. Like, the th I'm willing to give... Black Ops 6 a shot simply for the fact that the changes that they've made to zombies that they announced and I've covered on Nerd News, fucking stellar. Uh, like, which changes? So they've made changes to a. You can pick pick. Uh, you can they have different presets. You can you can deeply edit the the UI and they have presets including Black Ops 3 presets. Okay, cool. They have. Um, they segmented the game, so if you just want to play zombies, you just have to. You can just download zombies, and you don't have to drop, download all three hundred gigabytes of the shit. True. Um, they at, gobble gums are back. Oh, dope! You can store up to four gobble gums. Nice. At a time. Um, they are also editing um a lot of the UI elements as well, so you can add or you can have a you can set it to a more traditional zombies experience where you can have the numbers and the health bars show up. You can make those mm -hmm. disappear. Um, oh, nice. they, okay. they are coming back to um, like single map stories and things of that nature. Oh, like with like maps with dedicated like stories and Easter eggs. And then they're also adding um, plots to them. So like if you, if you get the Easter egg done before a set amount of time, um, you get like this decal on your account permanently, and after that set of time, they have a mode which will walk you through the Easter egg. Oh wow! Okay. That's yeah. Really 
well, not the Easter egg, the uh, story of the thing. And so mm-hmm. Easter eggs will be shut off. Other elements will be shut off just so you can actually do it. Cool. Which is awesome. And here's the big part. Any account level ups you do, like like level ups and games you get. It's cross progression. It, so it, it, it it's crossed crazy. over into multiplayer yeah. and stuff too. So there's a lot of fucking benefits in that. Let me just clarify for some people watching. Uh, if you still want multiplayer camos and challenges, you still have to play multiplayer, but the zombie stuff you can do through that, and then your level will cross progress among yep. uh, war, uh, you'll, war zone. You'll, zombies, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get upgrades on guns, you'll get upgraded new you attachments and shit, like by doing zombies. You'll get like, you know, things like there will be other decals and stuff that you can get that are part of the level up that, you, that you'll get through that. It's all, it's all, it's all love. So, like, the next time. The next time you get Game Pass, I, I would really suggest you play a little of uh, Cold War because I think you'll like Cold War Zombies. I actually have Game Pass right now, somehow. So maybe, okay. I'll, give it a shot. maybe I'll give it a shot. Uh, moving on, we have something called Secret Level. What is this? This shit, I'm so hyped. It's the uh, Love, Death, and Robot Creators. Okay. The Love, Death, and Robot Creators. Uh, we may get actually copyright striked. Don't play this. Uh, because um, they've been really weird about it. I've, yeah, I muted it. Okay, so uh, long story short, Love, Death, and Robot creators are making 15 anthology episodes based off of video game protagonists. So you got God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, Pac-Man is in there, Warhammer is going to be in it, and yeah, so I'm hyped for this. It's going to be December 11th, I believe, and it's going to be a TV series. So hopefully it gets really successful and they make more video game fucking uh, anthology. Episodes. Well, I mean, I mean, if it's the people behind Love, Death, and Robots, you know it's going to be amazing. It all it's going to happen is just wish for people wanting an entire fucking season of one of episode. each thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, Lord. All right. Uh, I don't care about the Indiana Jones game. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Mafia, Mafia the whole country. All right. Real mob, let's say. That's what we're talking about here. It's going to be set in early 20th century Sicily, and what a great idea, honestly. And that's not to say I don't think that I would like another mafia game in the United States. I would. But I think this is a refreshing change of pace, and I think it's got a lot of potential. And it's also been like a decade since the last mafia game. Uh, Mafia 3, yeah, I think came out in like 2016, 2018. I might even be too Did long. it? Did it? I thought it came out right. earlier than that. Mafia 3 came out in 2016. Okay, so about so almost a decade. Yeah. I think the reason, though, that it... The, the reason Mafia 3 was so bad was because they tried to do a Call of Duty Mafia... Uh, not a Call of Duty, a GTA Mafia game. If they remain a limited view small almost bare bone city with just missions a few side places to upgrade your vehicle just a little bit at a gun shop i'm good i don't need more than that no side activities maybe a little thing to like uh you know expand the personal story of the character but that is all i don't need 20 uh Pick why am I why am I spending ten minutes mission. driving to this area to do this? Hey, fuck exactly. That's why I stopped playing Mafia Three and why Mafia One Remastered. It's so fucking good. It's so good, so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's Borderlands That's Four. That's the reason why I've they seen it already. Movie. I've seen it already. Obviously, this is why they made a bad movie. They wanted to the, to plug this shit. Um. I'm just going to talk imagine about... Imagine if what... the movie was good, though. Could you imagine if the movie was good and the hype that this would be getting right now? Dog, 19 million play- people, I think, were playing Fallout 4 concurrently after fucking the, the TV show came out. Uh, why can't Bethesda follow fucking the 2K's goddamn or track record? Do this. This is how you do it. But still, with how y'all did the show, just this type of marketing, this is how y'all do it. I can't yeah. believe this. <laughs> yeah. My, here's my thing. The Fallout TV show had been in the works for years. Mm. And, and had had delay after delay after delay. Like, the, the Fallout TV show was, like, I think announced before 4 came out. You know, so... Was it really? Damn. I, th- I think so. Don't well, quote me on same that, with though. Borderlands. Borderlands, I remember hearing Bobby Lee talk about it in, like, 2012, 2013. Yeah. So... 
anyways, um, I, I, apparently I heard that the the dude behind it, the 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 the, the director didn't play the games, didn't bother learning how to play the games at all. He didn't care about the story or anything, but he like just watched Star Wars and Mad Max and like extrapolated that as the thing. It was so stupid. But um Yeah. I don't know why they think that's the way to do it. I really don't know why. Yeah, it's just goofy. Tune God for knows. more information. Uh, I have a few bonus announcements. In oh yeah, Starfield got a got Starfield, a buggy. Starfield, there's a new uh, vehicle available, and Shattered Space is set for September 30th. We got our first trailer for Berserker Kazan. Uh, okay. We've only gotten teasers it's, and little segments of gameplay. Good. This, I think, really gives us a better idea. You should check it out. It's pretty cool. We also got a new look at. I will say, I never thought in a million years they would add the vehicle to the fucking Bethesda game like that. Well, I'm surprised. So fucking with... needed. So fucking I'm... needed. Yeah, without a doubt. I'm just surprised that it actually works. Eh, the right? Diablo 4 expansion, Vessel of Hatred. That's coming yeah, out October cares. 8th, so. I need to. I haven't. I still haven't. I, I, maybe I'll go back and play a little more Diablo 4. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. I'll Get ready for three. more Diablo 4. Dune Awakening got some gameplay. It's. Frankly, a very pretty game. Uh, I'm trying to be cautious about it, but uh, it has potential. We showed off another game from the developer, but they're also coming out with... It's just another, like, survival crafting game. Uh, we have too many already. Yeah. Little Nightmares 3. Uh, that gameplay, of course, looked very cool. And the final one I've got for you today is Goat Simulator Remastered. Uh, yep. That ass? trailer. You should watch that trailer. That trailer is funny. All right, hold on. Let's uh, let's pull it up. Go Simulator Remaster. I play the shit out of that. Please tell me it's not a PS5 exclusive. It is. <laughs> What's your name? There's a lot of references. <laughs> Is that supposed to be fucking Arthas? From, from fucking Warcraft 3? <laughs> That's actually funny as shit. Hey, you. You're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border. <laughs> hey, you. You're finally awake. That's fucking funny. You were trying to cross the border. What is this supposed to be? I think that's supposed to be... It might be Assassin's Creed Unity for all the glitches. <laughs> Maybe, or... I don't know. <laughs> so much shade is being thrown with this, by the way. This is the remaster for the <laughs> I think it says Lovelace. You know what? I think that's an appropriate remaster. Yep. 
and I don't think it'll be more than like twenty bucks, thirty maybe. Yeah. All right. I'm. 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 I'm that's all right. I'm fine with that. <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah. No. Nothing really. I'm like super stoked about. I'm not even really excited for Borderlands Four. Honestly, you just want to see how it is. Yeah. It's like like here because here's the thing, right? Like Borderlands for the kids. Like it's not for us. Like we are not 13, 14 year old boys with pot with like to with like middle school humor. And I think that's why three didn't it, do so well. I, I it didn't hit. For, it, it, it 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 they it is it's like it, it's that sh it's it's for the kids. You know, Wu Tang. I was mean, for that's the actually, it's like that. It's like Wu Tang was for the kids. It's for the children, until the children were children in. I mean, that's the case with uh, the latest game they released too in the Borderlands universe thing. The uh, Wonderland, not Wonderlands, but yeah, Wonderlands. See, the problem with Wonderlands is, is that if every single enemy wasn't so fucking tanky mm -hmm. and getting through shit wasn't a fucking slog, like it was balanced better. And like in 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 the in the in the in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, you and you were in your first playthrough, like specking properly and getting decent weapons and shit, and like everything's t and you're having to drop your entire fucking load trying to kill these motherfuckers. And the problem is, I think I would have liked Wonderlands more if it if it had a more it felt more satisfying to play in that regard, and it did. Yeah, that sucks. It because it was like you killed one enemy, you went to the immediate next one, and then you were just like this is boring, my friend. This is not what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, and I mean it's better with friends, don't get me wrong, but like the fact that like I like the the bully sponginess of the enemies made it really fucking difficult. All right. Which I think it was I think it Wonderlands was was I think if they released a patch fixing that, like I would probably enjoy the fuck out of it. That or I'll turn the fucking difficulty down to the fucking floor and see if that does it. But like it just yeah. honestly, like when I did went through and play it on like very easy or easy, it was so much better. Yeah, because then you actually felt the same way you did with like Borderlands one through three. <laughs> right. How do you right. like the pre sequel? Oh, I love it. I think it's one of the best Borderlands games. Right. I think the I think I think. The writing for it was about at on par with fucking um two. Uh mm -hmm. the gameplay was better than two. Um the the only issue I had with it, it was short. It was just shorter. And um, you know, I thought that the I thought that and I wish that they had dedicated drops alongside the grinder. Gotcha. Makes I sense. think the I think the grinder was a great addition and a great fucking idea that I wish would come back. And it should have been happened with dedicated drops, alongside dedicated drops, not not as a replacement for. I got you. Makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, man. I don't know. I hope they manage to, you know, uh, Assassin's Creed to it, and it's just like a reinventation of the whole goddamn thing that just makes it feel so much better. Yeah. I, if you guys want a good Borderlands experience that has like better writing, like like better writing than three and better gameplay than two, just go play the pre sequel. Yeah, you're in space, Australia. Yeah, it's it's not as long. Yeah, there's only one DLC and a stellar DLC, I might add. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth worth a go. Apparently, we're gonna get a, like a lot more um, DLC for it. But it folded, and we never got it, which makes me very sad. Yeah, I don't think it was that popular when it released. No, and and it's like a darling in hindsight. People still hate on it because they they haven't fucking played it. And if you played it, you enjoy it. Like yeah. it's it's got a better opening. It's got like a better opening hour than any other Borderlands game, in my opinion. Even three. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know. It is, and I think that I think the classes are actually more interesting, like are definitely more interesting than two, and you know are about as they feel about as fleshed out as the classes do in three. If you to, had to, to say, if you had to say, the best like 
the most fun uh vault hunter in two who would you say it is the most fun not necessarily the easiest or like uh, yeah no i know i know it's like i'm also trying to check my bias because i am a krieg stan i mean you and me both that's who i would say <laughs> yeah i think the most fun to play I would maybe say zero. Zero? Now, don't get me wrong. I love Krieg. I think that all of his options are, like, really, really cool and interesting. But, like, you can coast through true, true Vault Hunter mode by with just the Mania tree with him. I hear that. You get into Big Bingus mode, like... You just get a get out of you get a death free card and can ignore damage for ten seconds and then kill everything. It's insane. Um, I think zero. Uh, while I think zero. Um, while while Flack later in in three kind of like like made the invisibility stealth kind of shtick. I think better. Flack is my all time favorite God Hunter. Yeah, I think I think zero definitely. I think Zero definitely, in, at least in two, had like kind of like the most novel and interesting kind of options in terms of gameplay. You know, so some... going, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I'm gonna change the subject. So finish okay. your point. Uh, the last thing I will say is that I will say that when it comes to Borderlands, there mm -hmm. is a specific kind of archetype of character that I enjoy. Specifically, it is the chaotic fucking tank. I like the thing that allows me. I like I like high generate regeneration, tanky to characters that don't appear on the surface. Tanky Lilith in Borderlands One is a good example of this. She is right. able to. She has a, a, a kit when at max level. Her kit is insane at being able to just merc entire crowds of enemies. It's absurd. Um. Uh. Uh, in two, it was Krieg because like he can just kind of get all his health back in one fucking go, and it's very fun. Um, uh, pre sequel, I played Nisha a lot. Um, okay. She was able to sort. She would basically, I think, like gain a bunch of health back whenever she killed an enemy. So like she was just like, ha, 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 and it was just like immediately kill everybody. It's insane. Um, nice. and, and she and she also had an interesting aspect where like you didn't want to use elemental damage with her. You got insane bonuses for using non-elemental damage, and you got rewarded for doing so. Nice. Um, and then in three, I played Amara. Love Amara. Um, sure. I she her she has a skill that basically whenever you deal status effect like like elemental damage to somebody, you gain your health back. So like as long as you're shooting and attacking and moving forward, you're like unless like so they wipe your health out in one fucking go which is not even at you know true vault like at, at like mayhem mode 11 it's not easy as long as you're like yeah. not playing like a dumbass um it's pretty it goes it goes pretty crazy i can solo raid bosses by myself um uh, uh yeah. so yeah I, I enjoyed just like the risk versus reward play style that was krieg was known for healing all your shit back quickly taking a lot of damage healing quick in like that jockey back and forth that adrenaline of like Trying to focus on your shit, looking down at the bar, saying like, and just like making sure that like that sees all happens. So, you can change the okay. subject now. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just gonna ask, going into Borderlands Four, who's alive and who's not? Going into Borderlands Four, who's alive and who's not? Maya is not alive. Um, Maya's not alive. Or who? Um, the people who we know are dead for sure are Maya. Flipso twins, um, their dad, Typhon De Leon. I'm saying of the like main good guy cast, so you don't have to like go through everybody. Um. So like Roland definitely is dead. Roland's uh, been Roland's been dead. Uh, yeah. Lil Lilith, we don't know. Okay. If she's dead or not. Um. I wouldn't be surprised if she's dead for most of Borderlands 4 and then comes out surprised. Um, Maya's dead. Uh, that's guaranteed. 
Yeah. So it's just just it's just Maya. Uh, um, Where? everybody else is alive. Uh, Mordecai and Brick were very much not super present during the Borderlands Three, which made me sad. But I understand. Like they were only there for like a little bit with T Tiny Tina, because they basically yeah. turned into like dads to her. And I mean, after they lost their best friend, I get it. <laughs> they're just like, all right, we're just gonna like do some like you know, platonic fatherhood of this like chaotic fucking thirteen year old who, which is very funny, has a has like like. Her type is like psychos. Literally. Well, yeah, so she's just it's, it's bad. Um Krieg is not playable anymore. I don't know if that means he'll be brought back for four. Probably not. No, he Krieg went through what could be best described as the closest thing you can get to therapy, I guess. Yeah, um, with the DLC, right? Yeah. Uh that was um he kind of like like his sane and unsane minds kind of accepted each other and kind of like learned to like not be at each other's throats anymore. Um, I don't know. It, 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 I, I'm unsure about it. You know what I mean? Like I think he's. I don't know what Creed. I, I don't know if what Creed Creed's gonna take. I'd love to see him in battle again. But that That's was what I'm saying, to be able to but, play as him, yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. The problem is, is that I think after all of the fucking story development they did, that they kind of like had to come to an agreement of, of how much violence is appropriate. I don't know. Probably. We'll see. Um, as far uh, Gage is still, you know, we saw her. She was fine. Um, fucking Death Trap didn't die, which is good. Um, I think the person we're going to see again is probably Rose, the antagonist from the, um, uh, fucking Western DLC. I don't remember. I don't think I played that. It's that was right. Borderlands 3 DLC? Yeah, it had, it had a solid couple boss fights. Interesting locale. Didn't give a fuck about any of the characters, but, you know, it's... You know, okay. It, it, you get reminded that even with the folksy like allies that the Jacobs Corporation was, you're reminded that they are a corporation and the fuck shit that they've done in the past. I I, yeah. I, re I remember Jacobs Cove. Yeah, that was a good that was a good place. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I was actually playing uh, on my siren today on um, Borderlands One, kind of finally getting her to max level. Oh, nice. I accept. I accept that I'm never going to be able to defeat Cromrex unless I get a team together to do it. <laughs> well, hey, anytime you want to jump on with me, Noelia and Alan will play. That shit ain't cross-platform. Damn. Much as I wish it was, but it ain't. Even but, with the remaster. Even with the remaster. Damn. Who did they would do that? Cross-platform is like pretty fucking rare. Like. You know, Minecraft got it and everybody thought it was standard. No, it's not. It is not. It should be at this point. At yeah, least for all the future games. Well, it's not an issue between PC and Xbox. The problem is fucking, um, the problem is fucking Sony, dog. Like, Sony are a bunch of bitches that hate fun. Trust me, I get it. But also, Nintendo isn't helping this at all. <laughs> no, well, I mean, they're more open to it than fucking Sony is. Like, so, like, Nintendo has, like, done cross-play much more than fucking Sony does. Well, yeah. Well, that's because Microsoft is 50% PC. What was, uh, what did you want to move on to after that? After the Borderlands yeah. discussion? The question that I asked about who is going to be alive during it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. So it's basically just just Maya is dead. Everybody that died in two is dead. Um, uh, you should I play. Think, the, you should play the pre sequel. I'm just saying. I'm playing through all the games with Noelia and Alan, so we'll get to it. I remember playing the beginning of it. I never got too far into it. I think I was playing Handsome Jack, but. Uh, uh definitely get, cloud traps cloud trap is a fun class 
I forgot yeah. he was a class in that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll play him next go around. I will say, I think they just released an update for Darkest Dungeon 2. So for anybody who plays that, check that out. Uh, Dark stoked. Side of the Ma Mountain Retail release. So boom. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's mods. Mods have been officially released for Darkest Dungeon 2 on PC. Are you stoked? I'm going to be honest. I wish I liked Darkest Dungeon, the series, more. I want to like it more. It's the same thing like with uh, Civilization and Stellaris. Uh, I play it. I, I enjoy it for what it is. Don't get me wrong. It's not nearly as uh, dreadful as the first game is. That first game is a fucking hard, hard experience to go through. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is more roguelite. So, uh, okay. you know. But yeah, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'm now going to show Brian Age of Empires 4. But before I do that, I'm going to bid you adieu. Uh, thank you for watching the rundown. Make sure you go follow Brian on his Instagram at uh, uh, no.2 underscore Brian. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Love you guys. Have a good one.